And um, as we are here tonight, um, we are going to be doing some of our observance of Tu Bishvat, which officially was yesterday, um, or during the day today. Um, and there is an opportunity to plant seeds up here, um, but if you didn't get an opportunity or you would like more opportunities, when we go next door for our Oneg Shabbat, not only do we have dried fruits and nuts, yay, yay. Um, but there is another planting station over there with different plants. If you did cucumbers and eggplant and mizuna here, you never know what you could find <laughs> next door. It is wonderful that we have this opportunity to be together on Shabbat. Um, and you will also see as we go through our service, then um, different parts of our service, our service readings tonight will incorporate some of the themes and the pieces of Tu Bishvat. In fact, a Tu Bishvat Seder, we know the main Seder happens during Pesach, but there has been over the many generations a Seder, a service done in a particular order with four cups of wine, which you'll see in a little while as we go through. Um, but as a way of acknowledging the birthday of the trees, um, the celebration when we see the cusp of winter and you will start to see the trees to bud. And in fact, when you go out and the sun is up, look at the oak trees. This morning was the first morning that I noticed, in fact, the new buds and the new leaves are starting to appear on the oak trees. See, it is to Bishvat, even here in Florida, where we kind of have that cold season just a little dose, but I heard it's supposed to be cold next week. So, and as I share this reading with you um, from, from about, which is about creation, and you'll notice what color is this? White. This is white. I'm not sure what just happened there. Oops. There we go. I lost my reading. Thank you. Um, this Shabbat, we praise creation by considering the beginning of Tu Bishvat, of the Seder for beginning of the Seder for Tu Bishvat. Like all holiday celebration, it includes the drinking of wine, or this is grape juice. Before the Seder is over, we will drink a little bit of this four times. Each cup reminds us of a season in Israel. This is a real picture that you see. The first cup is entirely white wine or juice, reminding us of winter when nature is asleep. The earth is barren and sometimes snow covered like this picture of Jerusalem awaiting the rebirth of spring. Baruch atah Adonai hama'ariv aravim b'rei pri hagafim. It's getting exciting now. The second cup is a splash of red. I do. Good. For revelation, we acknowledge the second cup of wine, which is darker. We pour a bit of the red wine or juice into the white and watch it change colors. In Israel, as spring approaches, the sun's rays begin to thaw the frozen earth. Gradually, the land changes its colors from white to red, and pink and white flowers appear in the mountains. Praise to you, Adonai the source, giver, receiver, generator of love for and through your people Israel. Baruch atah Adonai, Ohev Amo Yisrael. Borei pri agafen. If we, and we read responsively from our projection, if we can hear the words from Sinai, then love will flow from us, and we shall serve all that is holy with all our intellect and all our passion and all our life. If we can serve all that is holy, we shall be doing all that humans can to help the rains to flow, the, the grasses, grasses to be green, the, the grains to be golden like, like the sun, and, and the, the rivers, rivers to be filled with life once more. All the children of God shall eat, and there will be enough. But if we turn from Sinai's words and serve only what is common and profane, making gods of our own comfort and power, then the holiness of life will contract from us, our world will grow inhospitable. Let, Let us therefore lace these words into our passion and our, and our intellect, and bind them as a sign upon our hands and eyes. Let us write them in the mezuzot upon our doors and teach them to our children. Let us honor the generations that came before us, keeping the promise of those yet to be. Adonai Eloheichem, 
Emet. After the reading of Shema, we honored the exodus from Egypt and the redemption of our people. On this Shabbat, we consider this third cup of wine or juice, which is still darker. We add more of this red wine or juice and watch the colors mix. As summer arrives, the land of Israel becomes bright red. Tulips and red poppies burst forth and bloom. In this season, we are reminded of the people of Israel emerging from the sea of reeds and breaking out in songs of joy and rejoicing. Bore pre hagathan. And as our ancestors did, we sing like they did on the shores of the sea. As we ask God for a good night's sleep, we come to our fourth cup, which is all red. This cup symbolizes how summer ends. The trees are filled with blossoming flowers. The crops are growing tall as we reach autumn, the season of our harvest. We read together, Adonai, through the year, we walk with good companions. Let us continue to live with hope in our hearts and an eternity in our thoughts, that we might lie down in peace and rise up waiting to do your will in harmony with each other and all of your creation. Baruch ata Adonai, hapores sukat shalom aleinu, ve'al kol amo Yisrael, ve'al Yerushalayim. Borei pri hagafen l'chaim. One level of God's creation is the physical world, which is called Asiyah, the world we know when we use God's gift to make things. Here in wood and branch and spirit, the divine spark is hidden by a shell of, of its appearance. Fruit, like nuts with their hard outer shells, remind us that God's presence is often hidden. When we say words of praise and we thank God as we eat these fruits, we pierce the outer shell of the created world and sense God's holy presence all around us. The shell which conceals also protects. In the world of work, after everyday activity, the spirit requires protecting, protection and nurturing Special effort is necessary to protect it from indifference, from being forgotten, from unkind influences. And as we say these words of avodah, of ritual, we also acknowledge that sometimes we consume fruit that has a, a, she, a shell or a peel that we cannot consume to remind us of that protection. We praise, praise you, Adonai, our God, God for, for giving, giving us rituals to mark holy and awesome, awesome moments. Baruch ata Adonai, shodcha levadcha bir'ah na'avod. Some fruits have seeds and pits that cannot be eaten. The flesh of these fruits is a symbol of our ability to be creative, of our capacity to feel and speak and sing. The seed, 
is a reminder that God is the source of the artist's eye, the tuner of the musician's ear, the one who inspires the poet's soul. Kabbalists call this world of Yitzirah, of formation. When we eat fruit containing pits, we are reminded that even as we delight in all the wondrous expressions of the human spirit, we must appreciate the eternal seed that anchors us to the past and connects us to the future. Baruch atah Adonai ha'tov shimcha u'cha na'eh le'odot. And finally, from our projection for peace, not all fruits have indelible, bar inedible barriers or cores. We can eat the entirety of some fruits like these figs. These are reminders that we're connecting with God that we can break through the barriers between the physical and the spiritual world. This is called birya, which is a world where the distinction between the physical and spiritual world is blurred. The state represented by fruits such as raisins and figs in which the seeds and the fruit are interspersed and wholly edible. When we say praises to God before we eat this fruit, we acknowledge a world so close to God that there are no barriers. The spark of the divine flows freely. This is the state of shalom, where everything is coming together in perfect harmony. Baruch ata Adonai, amvarech et amo Yisrael, ba shalom. As we are seated, we take a few moments to offer our own silent prayers on this Shabbat. You will see projected for you is a meditation for this day of Tu B'Shvat, even as we take this day of rest and reflection and renewal. CG only. 